Hello and welcome. I am Miss Cullen, one of the assistant head teachers at Greenbank, and I'm joined tonight with Miss joined here tonight with Mrs. Fox, the head, one of the heads of Year Eleven. And what we're going to do is talk you through the Year Eleven ahead for your child, and discuss any um, um, any things like, for example, parents' evenings, and the way we're going to structure assessment, revision skills, and finally, Mrs. Fox is going to give you the priorities for Year Eleven. So, firstly, the form tutors in Year Eleven are Mr. Scott. Mrs. West and Mrs. Tees, who share 11C, Mr. Hunter, Miss Vasilo, Mr. Palmer, Mrs. Hill and Mrs. Autumn, and Mrs. Smith and Miss Addison. And we've got Mrs. Fox and Mrs. Stilwell, who are the joint heads of years that will be supporting your daughter, both pastorally and academically this year. Supporting the form tutors, we've also got a very experienced pastoral team of learning mentors that will be there to help support your daughter through the challenges of year 11 along with a fantastic Senko, Mrs. Howe, and Mrs. Edwards, who is extremely experienced in careers and can help guide your daughter throughout year 11 and the next stages. Some key dates for you. Our first virtual parents' evening will be taking place on the 21st of October. You should have been sent a link to this by a parent mail, and there's also a link on the school website under the parents tab. The week commencing the 17th of November, you should be receiving your daughter's first PIP, which is her pupil individual progress report, which will show you her attitude to learning this term and also forecast grades suggested by her subject teachers. The week commencing the 25th of January, your daughter will sit her mock exams and the results will be ready for you on the 22nd of February. The week commencing the 15th of March, your daughter will receive her final school report from us, which will also include her ATL forecast grades and comments from her teachers. Now, we can't present here this evening without talking about any future contingency plans in relation to COVID-19. So what we aim to do is, as we did during the summer, is continue to educate your child so they're not disadvantaged by any change in circumstance. Follow the curriculum and assessment as far as practically possible meaning that pupils should learn the same way, whether they are in school or at home. And I think really importantly, structure the school day in the same way that they're, so they are receiving five lessons that they can do at home on their own. Now, along the way, we've been guided that we have to have some contingency and there are four tiers. The first tier is what we are in at the moment. That is where the school is open for all. However, there may be times where children have to self-isolate and work will be set at home by a firefly. That might be if a child has symptoms and is asked to get a test. If large groups or classes need to self-isolate, the work will be set by a firefly and will be supported with Google Meet live lessons from the classrooms, which should be supported by video explanation. Your daughter will be finding that she's getting work set for every lesson, whether she's in school or out of school. All that is, is to make sure that no children misses work along the way. The second tier is where a rotor system. This might be the case where by government advice, we have to have children in on a different rotor. So the pupils in school will follow a normal timetable. Pupils not in school will follow the remote learning as we did in the summer term. All vulnerable pupils or children of critical key workers will be able to attend school irrespective of what year group like they did in the summer term. Tier three would be where pupils are educated at home by a remote learning, with the exception of the following who will be educated in school. Critical worker children, vulnerable pupils, and also selected year groups identified by the Department for Education. I would imagine in this case, year 11 would be a priority to be in school. Primary schools in tier three will remain open for all pupils. Lastly, tier four, this is where pupils will all be educated at home via remote learning with the exceptions of critical worker children and vulnerable pupils. This was the lockdown that we had in the summer. Now, the lessons we learned from lock lockdown that started in March, we learned loads of things that worked really well. Those pupils that were successful followed the similar routine to what they had in school. They started school regularly at nine o'clock they stuck to the timetables, they kept approximately to one hour each lesson, and they had short breaks. 
as you naturally get in school when you're walking between lessons. Live meetings, video and audio help to support learning, but we must know that this isn't possible in all cases. Collaborating with classmates. I know some pupils got some little work groups together and studied together and helped each other with any issues they were struggling with. Lastly, keeping a balance between schoolwork, activities helping to support, support along the way. For example, exercise, keeping fit and healthy and spending time with family that's permitted. All of these help contribute towards successful lockdown experience. We felt that we were very advanced with our remote learning at Greenbank and we used the platform Firefly. This, this can help pupils keep up to date with work, their set regular, regular lessons and it helped pupils keep on top of the tasks. You should have been sent on the 29th of September a Firefly, um, a, sorry, a parent mail with regards to Firefly and the parents app. This will help you be able to stay on top of your child's work and make sure they're doing what they need to do. Pupils have the ability to email or Firefly contact their teachers if they need any further, further support. And those pupils that contacted the teachers during lockdown really benefited from that um, two-way contact. Live sessions did take place over Google Meet, particularly for the current year 11 pupils. And your, your daughter has been shown how to use this facility. This session will appear in their Google Calendar as shown here. And they, they click on the link and they can access any live lessons that are taking place. If they are taking part in live lessons, please support your child by encouraging them to access the sessions in a quiet place away from any dis distractions. In order to be able to use the live streaming, it's really important that your children complete the acceptable use of the IT systems policy agreement. This will help protect both your daughter and school against inappropriate use of IT. Should make, most of the year 10s have already filled this in, you could just make sure that they've done that. If you have any queries and want to communicate with us, make sure you go through the inquiries line and or call or call the school office and please make sure that we have all contacts that are up to date. Now there's loads of reasons for the year 11 to be positive. I met with them with Mrs. Fox during the end of the summer term and we went through all the reasons to be positive about the lockdown experience that they've had. Number one, is they've already completed two of their GCSEs. They've only got eight to focus on. In some instances, pupils have got less, but it's a, an ideal opportunity for them to, to take is that they've got two already and to really consolidate the learning in their remaining subjects. The current ones are taken have some, some of them have been adapted in some way to take into account lockdown. An example would be the GCSE PE has been reduced to two, two practical activities instead of three. The geography field work has been changed and in across all different subjects, adaptations have been made. Another bonus for our current year 11s is the GCSEs have been done over three years. I know I teach GCSEP that I have nearly finished the course with my class and now we'll spend the next couple of terms consolidating their learning. I feel we're in a fantastic place to move forward. But lastly, and most importantly, the year 11s have learned some invaluable skills during the lockdown experience, such as resilience, independence, time management, time management, self-regulation, organisation, and they've also learned to do independent research. Now, one of my key roles in school is to help your daughter ace her exams. Now, quite often, children will see this iceberg of, of somebody who's successful. And what they'll see is someone doing well, and they won't really know what's gone on behind the scenes and how hard some children work. They won't have seen the dedication, the discipline, the sacrifice, and that also some of those children fail along the way and actually don't always have an easy ride, but they keep going. And that's what I've got to try and help your daughter do this year to benefit the most from the opportunities available to her. So the six things that successful students do is planning enough time to prepare, which I believe they've got, do the right work, follow a plan, correct any past mistakes, have short-term goals, and most importantly, do lots of past papers and low-stakes tests. I see there are 10 marginal gains that the children can make. Marginal gain is a small thing that over time, if you add them all together, makes a big difference. So these are the 10. I'm going to go through each one briefly. So number one, 
it's really important that your daughter focuses on her mind and body. So making sure they get exercise, making sure they have a good diet, they keep rehydrated, but also keeping that positive mindset and seeking help if they need, if they're struggling with anxiety over exams or stress, that they actually speak to someone and share the problem. Number two, give themselves adequate time. And that's all about planning. If they create a revision timetable, space out their revision and use checklists, they'll be fine. If they procrastinate and put things off to the last minute, as you know, that becomes a bigger mountain to climb. 80% of the work will be done before they go into the exam. 20% is the final icing on the cake. There is a fantastic app called Adapt, which is free to download, and it can create a study timetable for your, for your children. They just put in the GCSEs and the exam boards they've done. It gives them checklists, and it can create a timetable based on whatever start or finish point you want. I think it'd be really good if your children got that up and ready, starting ready for the mock exams in January, but I'll talk through that with them at a later stage. Tip three, staying in the moment. Sometimes children can catastrophize the situation and start panicking about an exam that's next due. What they need to do is break it down into manageable pieces. The biggest tip here would be if they've got a topic test, revise for the topic test. They've broken it down rather than waiting and just doing revision at the end of the course. Number four, doing the right work. Our Firefly has got a wealth of resources for them to look at. And on there are revision checklists, which tells you in each of the subjects what your daughter needs to know. It's a really good practice to have a look at that checklist and see where you are and what you need to focus on. Number five, understanding how we learn. One of the biggest problems and the reason why children found revision so boring is they use the least effective strategies. They highlight, highlight, copy and read. It's too easy, so therefore anything that's really, really easy can be boring. So what they've got to do is try and use, the, use these most effective strategies that are things like practice tests, spreading out the work, interrogating a, a, a somebody else, you working with them to help them study, questioning them, doing little tests with them, and all of these things are a harder way of learning, and um, condensing the notes, making the notes bigger, using pictures, using images. All of these things, I'll be doing them with them in study support sessions. It's all about how we go and put things into our long-term memory. And those things I've just talked about is we need to overlearn the work. We need to spread it out. We need to test and retest. And there's loads of good resource uh, websites they can use, like Quizlet and things like that, that can help them do that. Number six, time well spent. It's to do with when, those when your children are revising, Make sure that they're giving it the 100% attention. So if they're going to be working for an hour, put the phone away, put social media away. That way, the time is well spent rather than revising for an hour and half the time is spent looking at social media. The time isn't well spent, it's wasted. So that's just something to really um, think about. Number seven, the memory clock. The first quarter of any hour revision, let's say, for example, if you were to do an hour, which is probably too long, but it just makes it easy with the clock. The first quarter, 15 minutes, should be spent reviewing the notes, creating mind maps, looking at revision guides, maybe a little bit of highlighting. Then half an hour should be spent interrogating, doing tests, doing exams. So uh, ideal ways of doing this are things like Seneca, Quizlet, partner tests, parents tests, reading the work, covering it up, checking, making notes and checking whether you can remember them. And then the last quarter should just be checking where you went wrong, using the checklist and looking at the ways that you can improve. Unfortunately, children spend too long in that first section where they might spend a lot of that creating mind maps, but not actually testing themselves. Number eight, using technology. Like I mentioned earlier, the school's VLE has a wealth of resources. An example here is biology. It has all the topics there, all PowerPoints and slides and work that goes with them that they can use, and that's under science on the VLE. All subjects have got, have got a wealth of resources on there. That's just an example for you. Seneca Learning is a free website the pupils can use, which is really good for testing. 
Adapt is the revision planner. YouTube clips where it shows you, for example, in GCSE PE, little topics and it gives explanations and videos and quiz it that the children can download as an app. Number nine, this one's obviously going to be a little bit more difficult this year because of the COVID-19 situation, but attendance is really important. And the way I would stress that is even if the children cannot come into school for whatever reason, the, the lessons are now all on Firefly. So there's no excuse unless you, your daughter's too ill to do the work, that even if they're off, they could maybe spend a little bit of time just going over the topics. So these stats are really quite interesting. So as your attendance drops, your chance of gaining those five GCSEs that you need at grade nine, um, four and above can drop to 26%. So you've got to be in it to win it. So if you're not in school, use that, use those resources on the VLE to help you. Number 10, never, ever give up. You must have a growth mindset. You must believe in what you are going to achieve. And anything is possible if the children adopt a positive attitude and a positive approach to the next year. I know it's difficult. I know there will be distractions, but we have been really impressed with the way the year 11s have come back. I know you have given you a lot of information there. But I will be going through these revision strategies with your children in PSHE at some point and in PDT throughout the next few months prior to their mocks. So we're really excited about this year group and how they're going to do. So I'm going to hand over now to Mrs. Fox, who's one of the heads of year of year 11, and she's going to talk you through a few key priorities. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Cullen. Um, hello, everybody. It's nice to be able to talk to you. I am Mrs. Fox. Um, I am one of the heads of Year 11 and Mrs Stilwell is the other one. Um, I'd like to just talk to you a little bit about how to get in contact with us if you have a query or a concern. Um, phoning in to school um, is not necessarily at the moment the best way to do it. I would encourage you to email us. Um, we have a head of Year 11 email address. So it's just head of Year 11, H-O-Y 11 at greenbankhigh.co.uk and you can get hold of us like that outline your problem your concern and then we can investigate and phone you back at the moment we we spend a couple of days sometimes trying to get back to parents that we've missed um, on the phone and then once we've been able to gather information we can phone you back again so if you could email us first that would help us and um, we are trying to minimize face-to-face -face contact but we can arrange google meet um, online face-to-face -face meetings and um, if you would prefer that then please let us know and we will arrange a time that's convenient for us all um, the next i want to just talk to you a little bit about uh, some of our priorities some of these things have been mentioned by miss cullen who is now our revision guru so if you want to know anything about learning she's the person to speak to um, but we have found that many of our year 11 have developed wonderful independent skills during lockdown um, normally children are only faced with these challenges when they move to college or university but they've had to do it at the ripe old age of 14 and 15 during lockdown and um, they have developed skills that will stand them in good stead and so we're trying to put a very positive spin on what is happening at the moment. Um, as Ms Cullen has outlined, there is a lot for them to feel very positive about. Um, and as heads of year, that is a message that we will try and give them. Um, many of the children have grasped these, these new skills and really run with them. Um, so next, we obviously want your child to achieve. Um, you've been given lots of advice already. Um, what I would say is that every test every assessment is going to count. At the moment, we're not sure what the exams will look like, when they will be, or even indeed if they will go ahead. No one has made that decision. Uh, so many children are feeling that if they ha work hard now, they show their teachers that they're committed, that they ask for help, ask for advice, that this is a real opportunity for them. Some children are feeling the pressure. I have to say, in the last couple of weeks, we've had a number of pupils who are getting worried uh, and some of it has come down to this constant pressure that they feel under. Um, all they have to just take each day as it comes, face the challenges, ask for help, ask for advice, ask their teachers what they need to do to improve. And as it says at the bottom there, it takes time. They need to give themselves time to learn these things. Um, 
but we are always here to help. Next. From a, a parent's point of view, I think you're going to be faced with some uh, difficult times ahead. It's never easy guiding a teenager through their GCSEs. I've yet to experience this myself. Um, but there are some key things to remember. Firstly, don't get involved in their arguments. Try and take a step back. Um, and these are some things you might like to try saying to them. Um, things like, what have you done to help your understanding? Um, always ask them what they're doing. They need to be proactive. Encourage them to be proactive. Maybe let's get some fresh air. Let's take a break. Let's walk away and we'll come back to it in 15 minutes. If you are getting it wrong, you are learning, you are not stupid. Um, Miss Cullen referred to this. When children are at the edge of their understanding, that's where they're getting better. But it's not always easy to take. So when your child's at the point of giving up, maybe try that line on them. Um, well done for doing it again. Again, it, improving your work, going back to it, going over it. That takes real dedication, so reward them if they do that. Um, are you proud of your work today? It's a question you might want to ask them at the end of the day. Can you find another teaching resource to help? There are many out there. Um, let me sit with you and we will struggle through it together. Um, I think a child knowing that you have some time to spend with them and help, even if you don't have all the answers, um, will give them a lot of confidence. I know things are busy. It might not be that you can do that at that very moment. But you know, tell them in half an hour, yes, I can sit down with you and we will look at it together. Remember to put your mobile in the cupboard downstairs. Um, this has been mentioned before. At night, your child should not have their phone with them. It is a distraction. It drains their energy. They will be thinking about responding to the little blink that's just come up. So I would encourage you to model that as well. Leave all phones downstairs, maybe on charge at night. Um, because this is having effect on how well children are resting, sleeping, and how they're re-energizing. Um, the next one I've got in here is, did you write down your three positives for the day? There's a lot of research in positive affirmation about either writing down or speaking out loud things that you have found positive in the day, things that you have felt made you feel good. It could be that you've helped someone else. It could be that you were proud of something you said to somebody else. It can be very small things. It can be much bigger things. Um, but if you say these things to yourself, you will believe them. And it means your self-esteem will improve. And people with better self-esteem do well in exams, do better in exams. But it also protects them against challenges and changes. So if you could encourage your child, if they're struggling, especially in this side, then ask them about what good things they've done that day. Let's email your teacher for a bit of guidance. If they're stuck, encourage them to be proactive again. It's your effort that is important to me, not your mark. Try to focus on how they've got there, their, their journey, as we would say. How, how much effort have they put in? Because that's important. Um, not necessarily the grade at the end or the mark at the end. And the last bit, this sounds a bit American. <laughs> you might want to change this. But you are awesome. You know, they are fabulous, but they're not perfect. Some of our pupils do try to, to reach perfection and they're only going to be disappointed with that. But they are fabulous and they are awesome. So please try and tell them that every day. And next we have, I never miss a chance to um, highlight women in science. And only this week we have two women who've won the physics Nobel Prize uh, for looking at how energy changes in a black hole. And here we have another one, Sarah Gilbert, who is leading a team, hopefully for a successful coronavirus vaccine. And I listened to uh, a Radio 4 interview that she recently did. And she said, yes, she had achieved academically. But the reason why she's got to where she is is because she's a very good team worker. Um, and she's worked hard and that she can't do this by herself. And she has surrounded her people by surrounded herself with people who are supportive of her, who are a positive effect. And friendships and relationships are so important um, everywhere. Um, <clears throat> 
some of our children during lockdown stopped talking to people they normally see each week. So they may have stopped doing netball club or stopped going horse riding or whatever it might be. And they've lost contact and they haven't yet picked those positive, strong relationships back up. We found that in school, some children have moved friendship groups. Um, and for, for the reasons that I think they couldn't get easily hold of their, their original friends because they couldn't see them face to face, they now rely on on screen um, contacts. Uh, and so their world has moved online. And this has meant that you might not know at the moment who they are friends with. Um, can you ask them who they are friends with and suggest that if they've lost old friendships and they're sad about that, that they catch them up. Um, be aware of how much they're using social media. Um, please check your security on that side. And if you need any help, please contact us at school um, because we do worry a little bit about some of the negative influences that they are experiencing online. Um, so I think that's all I would like to say. Um, if you need to get hold of myself or Mrs. Burwell, please do drop us a line and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Fox. And I am re really pleased that you've, you've tuned in to listen to this today. Um, and I'd just like to say, you know, we are here. We're here to support your children through the next six to eight months as, as they complete year 11 and complete their story at Green Bank. They've settled in really well, they're doing really well, and we've got really high hopes for them, both pastorally, academically, and we are here. If any of you need any advice or any guidance, if you need any support with, with GCSEs, particularly revision strategies, that's my my thing that I, I'm here to help the year 11s with. But so, so be in touch. You will get a, a PowerPoint that goes alongside this that also says subject-specific support that we have. And like I said, the VLE is a great resource if you want to look on there for anything else and we look forward to seeing you all on the 21st of October. Thank you very much.